There are so many ways Holy Spirit has been taught and it has become almost like a formula. If you are disciple, you will know certain things about the Holy Spirit, such as he leases. But how many people get lead, led by the Holy Spirit today, even though we are Christians? Holy Spirit speaks to us. Holy Spirit guides. Holy Spirit teaches. There is so much about the Holy Spirit. We have heard, but some of us, we don't have tangible experience. This afternoon, we are looking at Jesus and the Holy Spirit, so that by the time it comes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the church, you know where you stand. Our foundation scripture says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, for the cleansing of your sins. The theological word or biblical word for that is for the remission of your sins. I don't like using that word when I'm preaching in the public. Some preachers would like to use it, but it, it makes no sense to the person who is not regenerated or someone who is not Christian. Remission doesn't make sense to them. So when you use that word, you have to break it down. And I don't want to waste time to break things down. So I would rather say that repent and Jesus will give you forgiveness of sin. He will cleanse you from your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what God wants to give to us. The Holy Spirit is that which will make all the changes. The Holy Spirit is so vital. There are many Christians who are living today and they have less knowledge about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit in their lives. So as we look at Jesus, I want you to look at yourself carefully and embrace the person of the Holy Spirit. We saw two weeks ago that when Jesus was launching his ministry, he came in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do. The Spirit of God anoints to do. He did not say the Spirit of the Lord is in him, but he said it's upon me. Now, I will always say this. There are two workings of the Holy Spirit. When we become born again, the Spirit of God comes inside of us. We will look at the role of the Holy Spirit inside of us. That's why the Bible said, greater one lives inside of us. We still haven't understood what it means by the greater one lives inside of us. But the Holy Spirit lives in, in us, but also comes upon us to work the works of God. So Jesus said, I was, I was conceived by the Holy Spirit. I was born by the Holy Spirit. I've grown by the Holy Spirit. Now it's time for me to fulfill the purpose for which I came to the world and the Spirit of God has come upon me, has come upon me and has anointed and empowered me. He has anointed me to preach. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. If God sends you, you will preach the words of God. Some people have mastered psychology and sociology and other things and they preach in the pulpit. I will not do that. He who God has spoken speaks the words of God. No sociology and psychological winding up people's mind. That's why we have so many Christians who are not effective because they know about everything except the word of God which creates which manufactures, which brings life, the word of God, which made us. For whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. God wants to pour. God is not a stingy God. God doesn't give you a teaspoon of the Holy Spirit. God said, I will pour upon. I will pour means there is no limit. 
Some people say Jesus was giving the spirit without measure, but we had the measure. No, God pours. He pour unto Jesus, but Jesus knows how to receive it, contain it, and work with it. Unfortunately, we leak. We leak. We don't know how to contain and maintain the Holy Spirit. So when God pours upon us, some go waste. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, he said, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. You sitting over here today, God has anointed you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your amen is weak. I said, God has anointed you too. With the Holy Spirit and with what? God has anointed you with power. God has invested power into you and upon you. But you might not be using it. Many of us Christians do not use what God has invested into us. If you like, start taking authority in your home. Start taking authority over circumstances and situations in your life. You will see how the devil will flee. Hallelujah. Start doing it and you will see how much power you have. The Spirit comes upon to empower one to work the works of God. The Spirit within and the Spirit that comes upon, they work together. So children, if you have given your life to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit already inside of you. But it's not enough. We need the Spirit that comes upon, which we call the Holy Spirit baptism. It makes people speak in tongues. It makes people speak diverse kinds of tongues. There are tongues of tongues. We have diverse kinds of tongues and we have the gift of tongues. Within the gift of tongues, there are even three manifestations. The interpretation of tongues. That somebody speaks in tongues and if it's a tongues, that is a message. God can pick somebody to interpret it. We haven't reached there yet. But God did not give us only the gift of tongues. He pour out all these. Which of them are we operating in? Do you know that God wants to prophesy through you? God wants to speak oracles through you. There is something we call word of knowledge where God gives you information about something that has happened already in somebody's life and you told them. And this is what people like. Satan can also talk about the past. So when you go somewhere and people are telling you, Madam, I know this that, 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 that happened. Don't get carried away because Satan also knows the past. There is a gift called word of knowledge. Something that has happened already from your life to the past till now. Then any time that word is released, there has two things have to happen. I'm not teaching on this gift, but I'm wetting your appetite so you begin to seek for God more. And God wants to use you as well. Whenever, if you are listening to me, listen carefully. Whenever God release this word of knowledge, two things have to happen. God either has to give word of wisdom or he has to give you a word of prophecy. Now, word of wisdom and prophecy are different. They will pray differently. We'll be looking at all these giftings. As we go, we come to the Holy Spirit and the church. Then we have gift of healings, miracles, and signs and wonders. All these, God doesn't need them in heaven. These gifts are needed on this planet Earth because this is where we have problems. In heaven, there are no sick people. In heaven, there is no secrecy. In heaven, there are no plagues. In heaven, there is no sorrow. In heaven, there is no grave. These giftings are needed on planet Earth over here. And God wants to give this gift. He wants to operate through Christians to use this gift to solve problems, not to uh, make ourselves rich. You see that most people who call themselves prophet are making merchandise. Not only. Some preachers are deliberately using the giftings of God to enrich themselves. That's not the way God wanted to be. If you appreciate that God has used a man of God to bless your life, like God has used us to bless people's life, and you decide to show appreciation and bless the man of God, you are welcome. But I've seen that Many Christians do not appreciate when God do something for them through a man of God. So the man of God has also taken a plan to extract money from you because you are not generous enough. 
many Christians are not generous. We just want to receive, receive, receive. We don't want to give. And the Bible said there is blessing in giving than receiving. But many Christians want to receive. Do you know we have so many people following us on the social media? They appreciate what we are doing. But ask how many on the social media are supporting what we are doing? None. This is a problem in the Christian. But God has poured the Holy Spirit. God is a generous giver. He said he makes the rain, rain for both the wicked and the righteous. God doesn't say, because this man is a murderer, this woman is a prostitute, I will let the rain rain, but he won't get some. No, no, no. God is a generous giver. He gives the sun for everybody. He has poured the giftings. Not everybody has it. Hello? Are you understanding me? You sitting over here, God has poured upon you. But are you making use of it? So Jesus said, the Lord has anointed me. And when Jesus said, the Lord has anointed me with the Holy Spirit, did we see the effect of the Holy Spirit? Of course, we saw it. He healed, he raised the dead, he fed people, he did what no man could do. Nobody has done. Even in the past, those who received the Holy Spirit and they worked with God, nobody did anything close to what Jesus did. But Jesus said, greater things we will do than he did. We don't believe it. And because we don't believe it, we are not seeing it happen in our lives. Put that scripture on the board again. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. I want you to read this until it enters into your spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. Please shoot it on the screen. What does it say? It says, for the promise, let's read it together. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to all who are far off. <laughs> the promise of the Holy Spirit it's not only for you, but for your children. Children, listen. Whatever you see God do with our life, God can do more with you. Because the promise is for you as well. It's not only for your mom or dad to prophesy or speak in tongues or to see visions and dreams. God said the promise is for our children as well. And for people who are afar off, there are people who are worshiping idols now. There are people who are calling themselves lesbians and gays now. That this promise is also for them. But they don't know. Somebody has to reach them and get this promise. Your children, your Christian, Christian parents, your children giving you problem. Have you let them know that God has a promise of the Holy Spirit to them, for them to do mighty things? Because they are not doing it, the devil has taken them and using them as a tool to torment you, to frustrate you. Some of you, you are crying, your children are in prison because the devil has taken hold of your child. When God has